Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 24 career mode. This is part number 44 today for the Monaco Grand Prix in season three. If you guys did miss the previous one at the Imola GP quite a couple of days ago now, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one as we had a 300 IQ play, not for myself, but one of the AI drivers. It was Lewis Hamilton in the red Ball Ford. That still is not something normal to say. But yes, Hamilton absolutely cooked the entire field by staying out when the rain came. Myself, the staff in pit, we were fighting earlier in the Grand Prix. Very intense fighting actually around Imola. Uh, then, but, you know, both of us and many people pit for the intermediates. But Hamilton stayed out, Lando stayed out, and they both managed to jump quite a few of us. And Hamilton came away for his first win for Red Bull and in the lead of the Drivers Championship ahead of Leclerc, myself and Max Verstappen. In terms of the pecking order of the constructors, it is quite similar to what we're seeing in the R&D chart. I feel like maybe McLaren not making the most of their performance and we're doing as good of a job as we can hope to do to try and drag Mercedes up. Obviously, the DNF at Japan didn't help and so far Russell hasn't really got off the mark completely but maybe some upgrades could help with that we've actually got enough r&d points to now purchase something it's actually the upgrade that russell is looking at and my logic is if we buy this one then he will go and buy one of the other upgrades that only he can get because of his recognition and that's exactly what happens so that strategy has paid off russell went and got and bought an upgrade that i just couldn't even unlock basically so we have two chassis upgrades in the pipeline we already had one upgrade Coming in to this episode, you may have seen right at the start of uh, as we loaded in to the activity timeline. So you can see we have made a little upward trajectory towards Ferrari and Aston Martin, McLaren and Red Bull still with a little margin together at the top of F1. And meanwhile, at the bottom, high tech, the biggest movers of the entire grid. Look at the amount of progress they're making. So they are really trying to get themselves out of this hole of being such a step staple back marker, P20, P19, and that's good at least for Oli Behrman's sake, obviously his debut in Formula 1, I want to see him do well, he was our F2 teammate of course so it'd be really great to see him being able to fight for maybe a bit more as the teams in that kind of second tier of F1 pack basically have stalled a bit plateauing, maybe saving R&D for bigger upgrades coming into the European portion of the season as we now go into the Monaco GP weekend, and going to the first part of this race weekend for Monaco it's always the most important qualifying the entire season but maybe more so this season on this game because of the improved AI racing mod we've got for this season the pros being hopefully AI being better to race going for moves the con has been the AI kind of reverting back to how they used to be kind of on F122 where they've got some you know godly acceleration so who knows this is after the new 1.10 OP which has that, uh, well, it's a glitch, it's a mistake where you can deploy double the amount of battery on a lap, basically. So who knows, maybe that actually will help us in some circumstances over deploying to try and make an overtake or two who knows and adding on to all of that allegedly a thing that has been fixed or should be fixed is the discrepancy between qualifying and race base for the ai actually using deployment properly so let's see i'm a little bit skeptical about that but we're trying our best to navigate the car a lot of understeer though here it must be said on this first flying lap as we run to the line and i get spooked by sergeant coming out the pit lane my life Flash before my eyes there. Thank God that in that case there was a ghosting system because I wanted to keep the line as tight as possible. But that means going directly across the pit exit. Sergeant comes out and ghosts through, thankfully. But, it, it, you know, I didn't know he was going to ghost through exactly. And we got spooked uh, with a jolt at the steering wheel. So span it round. Thankfully, no damage. And now here we are on our second flying lap and our final lap here with the timing. But I decided to go a bit earlier than everyone else out on track just to get the uh, free track base. You can see there's no one around me. 
And this needs to be an improvement because Verstappen has gone and taken provisional pole position away from us. It's a purple first sector, so it's a good start. No one around us, so we can focus on ourselves. And that's going to work out for us because we come across the line and go purple ourselves once again to take back pole position. But it's, it looks to be a real nice straight fight between myself and Verstappen. Behrman up in P6 momentarily for high tech GP. By the end of it, it's lower down. But look at some of these positions. What on? I'm sorry. Nico Hulkenberg and the Haas. Oh, on the on the second row, alongside Albon in the Williams. Both of them out qualifying the Ferrari cars. Hamilton P6, um, Piastri P8 in the Haas. McLaren and Lando Norris have had a mare around Monaco. 17th place for him. Uh, Fernando Alonso down in 15. Our own teammate, Russell, down in P14. So some big winners and some big losers here in the short qualifying around Monaco. Well, if this is representative of the race pace, it's going to be a very interesting afternoon coming up, but uh, I imagine maybe a bit of traffic has come into play there potentially, but uh, it's certainly mixed things up. And one thing that hasn't mixed up and changed is myself versus the staff, and it's the same as it was in Imola. Let's go to the grid. A proper road race, and in the true meaning of the word, that's how Mr. Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. It's a Mercedes pole position then, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hulkenberg, Albon, Leclerc, Hamilton, Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Sonoda, Stroll, Ricardo, Ocon, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Bottas, Norris, Behrman, Joe, Perez, and Logan Sargent. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. And alongside me today, former Formula One driver and former world champion too. See, told you I'd give you a big intro. Anthony Davidson, hello. I know what we've got to do before the start of today's race, but what about our driver? What do the final hours look like for them? Well, for them, you know, you've got your pre-race rituals that you go through. You see different drivers uh, that, you know, some have got their headphones on, they're listening to the music. Some drivers really absorb the energy from the crowd and they're there waving to them. Other drivers, they go within themselves. They chat to their engineers, absorbing that information, that vital information that you need to carry you through the race. And, you know, those pre-race rituals are essential to making things systematic. We do a lot of Grand Prix in a season, and the more systematic you can be, the easier you are within that environment. It seems like it may be a classic Monaco Grand Prix today, despite the tyre wear mods, despite, you know, potential better racing mods. I, I, you know, looking at the strategy, it's a one-stop okay, so either way. And I feel like even more so with the slower cars up the order, I think there's going to be a little bit of traffic issue, potentially people getting held up. This may mean myself and Snap and get isolated for P1 and P2, which will be quite an intense fight up at the front, us both pushing each other, because I feel like Hulkenberg and Albon, Albon especially, starting on hards, he is going to be a massive bottleneck uh, for okay, all the drivers Park behind him. So right. well made be, it may be myself, v Verstappen, on our own, out in front okay, by so miles, if Albon is holding up everyone. But let's see, let's see what today holds. We're on pole position, which is the best position for the Monaco Grand Prix as we go towards those five little red lights here in the Principality. Lights out and we're underway. Verstappen actually gets the better getaway and he's now fully alongside us, side by side into turn one and it's a very crucial little bit of navigation on the inside line to maintain first place. Verstappen was ready for the pass. We had to slightly start to squeeze him out and put him towards the wall and he backed out of it 
Albon on the hard tyres, by the way, has overtaken Hulkenberg. So the Williams is flying high in third place on the hard tyres. So if it wasn't clear before, I feel like more than ever now, this is going to be a case of myself and Verstappen pulling away and Albon potentially holding up everyone, doing a bit of a Fernando Alonso from a couple of years ago around Monaco. And uh, the minimap may look quite comical, but to be fair, Verstappen is putting the pressure on. So for us in the cockpit, the race is going to be very intense indeed because he is going to be all over the back of us. We know how good that Red Bull has been so far this season. We know how good the AI are on the acceleration this season with the improved racing mod. It's a caveat we're going to have to accept as Verstappen pulls out onto lap three. DRS aided fully alongside us. Purple lap time, but just like at turn one, lap one, we do enough on the inside to get the elbow out. Albon having a good view, and to be honest, fair play to him, he's not holding everyone up. In fact, I'm the one slowing the pace down, if anything, trying to keep Verstappen at bay, and that's actually allowing Albon to still be there nose to tail with uh, Verstappen, you know, Hulkenberg right behind, Leclerc, Hamilton, Sainz, Piastri, Stroll, Ricardo in the Toyota, in the uh, last car in the top 10, but Verstappen is all over us through the tunnel once again. He may be going for a move. We're going to go defensive to the inside. Verstappen goes on the outside. We're going to take the line normally. Verstappen definitely cut the curb there. We gave him enough room. We took the normal racing line, expecting him to back out, but he just completely cut the chicane to keep it side by side. Thankfully, we have remained ahead, but Verstappen now almost, you feel, getting a bit desperate for a move here. You know, maybe knowing that he has more pace in the tank and I am very much annoying him to no end right now as he has DRS for the second time, this time on the inside of turn one. And again, playing it hard and fast with the curb lines. Verstappen actually ahead now by a whisker. We managed to dive it back down the inside through Casino Square. We take Verstappen wide at Albon. Albon's gone through the Williams up into second place on the hard tyres still, which is uh, the bigger thing, really, because he's going to go longer. He's going to go longer. He's going to have track position, Albon. And now he's second place. Unbelievable. I didn't, know, I didn't intentionally think that Albon was going to get that second place. We were just trying to defend Verstappen as hard as we could because he was really coming at us at a rate of knots. But that is going to give us a little bit of breathing room. Lap 14 now. So we've really gone through the laps on this opening stint and have been able to just keep Albon at an arm's length outside of DRS. Verstappen has been right on him. Hulkenberg, to my surprise, has been keeping Leclerc at bay. Behind you've got Hamilton, Sainz, Piastri, Stroll, Ricardo, not too far off each other, you know? Yes, they're stringing out a little bit, but I'm genuinely surprised by the pace of some of these slower cars, or quote-unquote slower cars, and I'm surprised equally by Russell, you know, the likes of Russell, my teammate, really not looking that great. He has really not got off the mark this season, has he? I really expected more from Russell as a teammate. And so back to our POV on lap 15, as much as I have been able to relax, now my tyres are screaming out. You can see the tyre wear levels there. And Albon now is actually attacking me and putting me under pressure. So we're going to pit in and Verstappen is going to cover me off. So Red Bull would have seen that and just told him, look, if he comes in, you come in because track position is massive here you don't want to get undercut so the only solution if you're behind the car you're trying to keep up is just cover them off do exactly what they do and hope you can stick with them but uh, we are going to come out in a little bit of traffic and that potentially might help us out as we are going to come out behind Ollie Behrman in the high-tech GP car who's trying to overtake Joe Guan Yu in the Audi and behind Verstappen has come out behind Sargent so as I struggle to actually make a move on Behrman here you know it is Monaco and even though these cars are much slower it is difficult at least Verstappen at the same time is respectively getting held up by another high-tech GP car so just like in Imola the high-tech cars helping me out a little bit with Verstappen but I need to get past Behrman here as we now go down the inside and try and pull off our infamous Raskas dive bomb and we have done that on the inside up into now P11 more positions to come as people now start making their one and only pit stops for the afternoon 
afternoon and we're up into P7. But now we need to try and get past Joe Guan Yu. And then we've got a pocket of clean air finally. Albon's obviously going to be going long. So we need to make sure there's no funny business with getting, you know, overcut basically with him going longer in clean air on the hards. And that means getting past the traffic because as soon as we get in clean air, we know we should be quicker on paper than that Williams. So it doesn't matter. He's in clean air right now. And obviously, as it stands, I've got two cars between myself and Verstappen. Both high-tech GP cars now holding up Verstappen as we go for the move on the inside of the tunnel on the Audi Sport car as Joe actually tries to defend me to my surprise. And <laughs> he's hit the wall. He's hit okay, the wall, the wall and we've just managed to out. avoid that. We went in for the tighter line and just avoided his car careering okay, into ours okay, as he hit the inside it's barrier. It's and there's actually, we've gone from a safety car to a red flag because of the debris and the pileup happening out the tunnel. We got lucky. If I was an inch closer to Joe Guan Yu, maybe, maybe he would have made contact with us as his tyre sheared off. But even though I'm happy we've avoided a crash there, what I've now just realised is everyone that was left to pit ahead of us now gets a free pit stop. So Albon, I think, is actually going to be leading and getting us underway from pole position. Look at this. Alonso, Stroll, Ocon, all ahead of us. Lights out and away we go for the second time today in Monaco. And it's Albon v Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg out of nowhere is going to lead this race in the Haas. He got off the line better. He's overtaken Albon. Fair and square. Hulkenberg leads from Albon. Stroll, Ocon, ourselves. We're ahead of Alonso. We got him into turn one. Leclerc. Behrman is legitimately now in the top ten because of his free pit stop. Verstappen is outside the top ten. He's behind his own teammate. So even Hamilton jumped up the order with the free pit stop then, it looks like. Or I think they got caught up in the debris of Joe Guan Yu. And Verstappen is really having to fight Sainz and he's losing time to Sargent of all people. Both high-tech GPs are in the top 10. They're in the points legitimately because we're all going to the end now. Free pit stop. Even the guys who, are, you know, went hard to mediums, the mediums should just about get to the end. So no one is making a pit stop now. So this really is, honestly, uh, you know, these guys who have now made up these positions, they need to try their best to maintain track position and get it to the end. But one person who won't be, I can see on the minimap, is Hulkenberg. What is going on? He was leading and he's pit. Has he got damage? What happened? Has he? He must have damage. Sure. Oh my god. No way. No way. Hass. Oh, Hass. This is the biggest fumble in the known universe. There was no damage. No front wing change. There was no point for that. Why did they start him on a set of mediums? They knew they had to get off and go to the hards. Ridiculous. So lap 22 then. Albon leads again. Stroll in second. It's a 1-3 for Williams. It's oh! Hamilton locks up into Mirabeau and Logan Sargent of all people is going round the outside. What am I seeing? What are we witnessing in front of our eyes? Logan Sargent has just absolutely cooked Hamilton in a red ball. It's now a high-tech GP, seven and eight, legit. And Hamilton and Verstappen both have to get past Sargent. Uh, oh my days, what is going on in this race? I really thought this was going to be a very pedestrian, normal Grand Prix. Stroll now comes. Oh, what is, what are some of these teams doing? What are these strategies? Why is Stroll in? As now Alonso pressurizes us because he's on the medium. So uh, right now his mediums are very much quicker than my hard tyres. But eventually those mediums will wear out. But it's now Williams 1-2, but... I'm going to see if I can ruin that and ruin Williams' day. I'm sorry, because we're going to try and overtake Ocon, who now has been uh, susceptible to a move here, because Stroll is now no longer giving him DRS. And we make a lovely little pass at the inside of Mirabeau to get up into second place. It's a, there's a six-second-plus gap to Albon. We've got 11 laps to go. I've got a bit of engine wear as well. This is going to be a little bit tough. I, I, you know, I'm going to try my best to push, but I have my doubts if we can actually catch up to Albon because he's on the quicker tyre. And right now, 
legit. He's actually got some good pace. I'm actually surprised how quickly he bolted off into the into uh, into the distance. And now lap 30, I'm not catching him. He's getting away from me. As what just happened? Oh my god! What? Ocon, oh, Ocon hit the back of me. There's a safety car. Ocon. I think Ocon drove into the back of me. I was just taking it easy into Raskas because basically at that point, I kind of accepted I wasn't going to catch Albon. Um, so I was just trying to keep the tyres in a good range. And Ocon has actually been so eager that I think he drove into me as I slowed early for Raskas, just trying to take it easy. Also, I need to wa watch out for fuel, by the way, because uh, my team have told me fuel has been a little bit iffy, so I was also doing a bit of lifting coast. And in doing so, oh, oh no, Hamilton's out. Hamilton's out. So that's uh, bad news for Red Bull. The championship leader is out. But yeah, Ocon driving into the back of me. We've got a safety car here, and... Uh, it, it sounds crazy, but I'm considering pitting because these hards have been so bad. I, I just don't actually see us overtaking the Williams, even though we're going to be right there with him on the restart. I just didn't. I was I was not convinced we were going to be able to go for Albon for this race win. At, oh, my God. No, there's an issue with the rear. 4.9 second pit stop. Okay, great. Thank you, Merck. You've just ruined that. You've just ruined that. We've lost we two, three seconds there. The and that may be the difference the because now, they instead of being, I think I was meant to be in like P11, we're now in P15 because of that slower pit stop. We are on really fresh mediums though. And everyone has been on these tires since what? Lap 15? So that's that's 15, 16 laps they've been on these tyres. So I'm really counting on that delta time difference that you hear so much about in real life to be the bigger factor here. And I've got to back myself. I am backing myself. I think we can catch back up, up to where we were, you know, into a podium slot and maybe then have a half chance to maybe attack Albon right at the end on much fresher mediums. Remember, he's going to be on really old mediums. He's not on hards, so his tyres will be really worn, but the overtaking must start now as we send it on our old teammate, Lando Norris. The two McLarens really struggling today around Monaco, not making the most of their, you know, potential car performance. And uh, in contrast, high tech, look at that on the ladder. They're both up in the top five, I think that is, as we close up to search. Perez and we're going to dive it on Perez in a very similar fashion to the way Checo did so many times back in 2013 at the Monaco Grand Prix when he was driving for McLaren the first time. Do you remember that? Uh, you're going to have to be a bit older to remember but uh, I do vividly there. Checo was an absolute animal on that Monaco GP day making some absolute sends and a half out the tunnel in that silver and uh, chrome red McLaren as we overtake Ricardo with the Ras gas move we now send it to the inside of Bottas at Mirabeau very close stuff okay, there did you see he almost shut the door on us so that could have been a pretty bad accident with Bottas there but we make it work we're up to P11 so I reckon at the rate we're going added in factor of the tyre we're getting worse and worse for these guys ahead of us I think we can at least recover back to where we were pre-pit stop but now Mark is giving us the hurry up to overtake our teammates as Russell hits the wall in the same place as the Audi it's another lucky escape even more so than before and it's a second red flag of the day. But Russell really nearly punted our rear end. Like our rear left tyre could have been sheared off by his car. We got even more lucky there as we now go to five red lights for the third time today. But we're now all on softs. Lights out and away we go from P10. But now we don't have an advantage. This has actually worked against us. Yes, we're now here together with everyone, but now all of us are on soft tires and it's a sprint race to the end. Ah, oh, that second red flag's actually undone anything we could have done. I really honestly believe, uh, you might call me delusional in the comments, but I honestly backed myself to get back to second place.
on that medium tire versus everyone on very old hards and mediums. But now, look at this. Sonoda and the Toyota is putting up such a good fight because we're all on bloody softs now. This has just completely undone that gamble. Um, and ironically, it's come from our teammate crashing. So it's a, it's a self-inflicted uh, annoyance here. Our only hope is maybe getting Verstappen right at the end as we <laughs> absolutely uh, just sent it on signs there. Maybe a bit over-aggressive as we did rub the wall. We rubbed his side pod, but needs must. The red mist had descended a bit for me in the cockpit because it was so frustrating. So frustrating realising that basically the gamble had been undone uh, but what is a good feel story here today is the two high-tech gp cars they're p4 and 5 legit ollie bearman our f2 teammates uh he's gonna score p4 in his fourth race in formula one what an insane result that's gonna be for him what an insane result for sergeant as well for the entire high-tech gp car that formerly were known as alpine and it's gonna be an awesome day for alex albon in the williams leading the race we're on the last lap it's guaranteed to be a victory for him. But can we try and swap around the positions for ourselves and Max Verstappen and try and at least gain some points on one of our championship rivals here to make up for what's gone on around us in this race? It's been a chaotic one. Two red flags. Um, really did not think it was going to be this chaotic. I, I was ready for a, a very mundane Grand Prix, but here we go in the final two corners. A bit of argy bargy. Verstappen comes back at us. Oh, we've broken our wing as we play a bit of ping pong in the final corner. And Carlos Sainz will come through to re overtake us. Oh no. Oh no. It's karma. It's karma. It's karma. It's karma for me being too aggressive. Sainz re overtook us there as Verstappen hop skipped the curb in the final corner. Um, yeah, we, we, we that was just very opportunistic on the inside there. I did give Verstappen a lot of room here, by the way, and he was the one who jumped the curb into us, but I deserve that. I didn't deserve that position, fair enough. <laughs> what a day it has been for Alex Albon, who takes the chequered flag and wins. Well, it all came good in the end for them, but it wasn't an easy start. Not the most straightforward of days, but I think it shows great strength in an athlete as a driver when you can overcome a day like this and walk away still with a victory. Well, in all the chaos here, a man who hasn't won a Grand Prix this season so far leads the championship. So I think this is really showing and setting up a very open season, I think, with, you know, anything can happen, especially with races like this. Williams and Albon winning, high-tech GP and Behrman scoring big. What a crazy race. Guys, if you have enjoyed it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.